Before we begin, uh, we're going to be talking about equipment and setup. I'd like to just show you my setup. Uh, this welding booth is modeled after um, what I had experienced in my welding school. Uh, this is a setup where the MIG welder and the TIG stick combo unit is uh, both located under the bench. That gives me a very large work surface. Uh, the two bottles for the um, shielding gases, I've got my argon mixture uh, in the big cylinder. I've got the argon CO2 for the MIG in the uh, little cylinder. Uh, they're properly chained to the wall. Uh, I got the regulators attached, so they're pretty much ready to go. Coming over here, I have easy access to my oxyacetylene torch setup. Uh, and that's been in my family for quite a while. It's an older setup, but it still does the job, and I, I don't really think anything on the market today can really replace it, so I'm going to hang on to that as long as I can. Uh, up here, I have my plasma cutter, and below that, I have another MIG welder that's set up specifically just for flux core arc welding. And then if you follow the plasma torch lead all the way over, you'll find a CNC plasma cutting table, uh, and I just used the CNC table along with the software to cut out the uh, coupons or templates for the welding projects that are needed to complete the welding merit badge. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using a MIG welder. Now my MIG is going to use a shielding gas from a high pressure gas cylinder, so it is considered gas metal arc welding. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail on how to set this machine up or what machine settings would be appropriate for this job. Um, every machine is different. Amperage settings from one machine to another can vary slightly as far as the machine's performance. And as the welding merit badge instructor, you should have a general idea of how your machine functions, how it's set up, and what settings are appropriate. So um, with that knowledge, use your best judgment in setting up your machine and communicating all of this information to your merit badge class. Okay guys, I've got my welding leathers on, gloves, helmet. I'm ready to do the first hands-on requirement of this merit badge. After successfully completing requirements one through five, Use the equipment you prepared for the welding process in 5B to do the following. 6A. Use a metal scribe or soapstone, sketch your initial onto a metal plate, and weld a bead on the plate following the pattern of your initial. Here I have a piece of quarter inch plate, it's approximately 3 by 3 it's a piece of scrap from a project that I was working on earlier. So basically, to complete this requirement, I'm going to draw my initial would help if I extended the soapstone. And I am going to use the MIG welder to put a bead over my initial. I don't know how well you can see that, but that's requirement 6A. Requirement 6B. Cover a small plate approximately 3 by 3 by quarter inch with weld beads side by side. All right, guys. I've got my 3 inch by 3 inch by quarter inch steel plate. And I'm going to clean this up a little bit, and then I'm going to weld one bead and then following beads and I'm going to try to keep them as close as I can without putting one directly on top of the other. Um, this is called padding beads and uh, I'll give you an idea of what it looks like in just a minute. First thing I'm going to do is clean this up a little. You see I got one bead right along the edge, 
Uh, I'm running a little bit cold, but I don't want to uh, warp this plate because it is really small. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to start putting more beads down. I'm going to fill in as much of this plate as I can. All right, guys, this is what my plate looks like after eight passes. Uh, I am a little out of practice, and I'm honestly not used to welding on a plate this small. Um, normally, when I did this in school, I was running in seven inch stretches. Um, so I'm doing some starts and some stops, and uh, you know, just trying to get back into the swing of things. It's always good to practice. Uh, welding is a perishable skill, and it's something that you need to practice and uh, keep your skills honed. But this is what they're looking for. This is putting um, one bead after another, after another, after another. I've got about eight of them there. So that is requirement 6B. Requirement 6C. Tack two plates together in a square groove butt joint. All right, guys, what I'm going to do, it doesn't say where it wants me to tack these. So my personal preference is I'm going to tack them on the side so it leaves me a clean, straight shot for the weld joint itself. Okay guys, as you can see, I've got my ends tacked together. Uh, there's a little bit of slag still left on here from the plasma cutter. I'm going to clean that up before I do my weld. But um, this is essentially what they're looking for. And to complete the requirement, we need to run a bead on this seam and on the back. Requirement 6D. Weld the two plates together from 6C on both sides. Okay guys, um, that right there is a halfway decent weld. Um, I ran this one hotter than the first. Uh, I ran the first one cold because I want uh, you to see the difference and I would also do this demonstration for the scouts so they see what's going to happen. Um, if you run too fast, what you do is you wind up with a bead that uh, the toes aren't fully incorporated into the parent material. Uh, it's very cold. Uh, you do get a little bit of undercut now and then uh, if you slow down you change your speeds but if you keep a nice consistent speed and you run at the right temperature that's the type of weld bead you're looking for um, I sped up just a hair right there you can see that there's a little bit of a difference in the bead but uh, your speed really does make a difference when you're doing this sort of thing but um, that being said this completes this requirement Requirement 6E. Tack two plates together in a T-joint. Have your counselor inspect it, then weld the T-joint with a fillet weld on both sides. Alright guys, there is the T-joint tacked. Uh, again, I prefer to tack them on the outside, uh, just so I can get a nice clean start and stop. Uh, it's kind of helpful for the guys when they have a definitive starting point and stopping point and they can really see the bead from start to finish. They don't have to worry about the tacks interfering. So that is um, how I would set it up and now I'm going to weld it out. Okay guys, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell the difference just because of my lighting, but this is the completed weld. This weld I went slower, um, I did a little bit of a C movement as I was going along, tried to blend the toes of the weld into the parent material, and um, that is uh, a good weld. On this side, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but uh, yeah, that actually looks like you can. You can see where I went too fast, where the... Um, the weld puddle didn't uh, burn in correctly. There's a uh, lack of fusion on some of the bottom section over here. Um, like I said, don't know how well you could see it, but this is how I would run the demo for the boys. 
I want them to get an idea that it's not about finishing a race, it's not about finishing first, it's about taking your time, being patient, and doing it right the first time. But that completes the T-joint requirement. Requirement 6F. Tack two plates together in a lap joint. Have your counselor inspect it, then weld the lap joint with a fillet weld on both sides. Alright guys, for the setup on the lap joint, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the butt joint that we did and I'm going to put this on the aluminum. Then I'm going to put the fresh piece of metal in front and the other one on top. Now that gives us a nice stable platform for our lap joint. Like the other welds, my tacks are on the outside of the joint and uh, I'm just going to go right ahead. You get the idea. I'm going to finish welding this out. All right, guys. Now you may see a little smoke coming off this. I did quench it in water just so I can get back to filming. Um, since there's no bend tests or anything required, um, the quenching of the weld isn't going to really matter as far as its integrity. Um, I did, as I did the other two, weld this two different ways. Um, I used a crescent moon pattern on this bead, and you can see that it wasn't hot enough. Um, there's no fusion in the toes, and this is a uh, convex weld uh, profile. Uh, what I did for the next weld, I turned the amperage of the machine up. I even went a little faster, increased my wire speed, and uh, I've got nice fusion in the toes. You can see that uh, I've got a relatively flat surface. It's not uh, concave or convex, so that right there is a halfway decent weld. Uh, and like I said, I like doing this for demonstration purposes so they can really understand the subtle nuances and amperage changes and wire feed speeds and how fast they travel with the torch. But um, that being said, this completes the requirement for the lap joint. Requirement 7 states, do the following. A. Find out about three career opportunities in the welding industry. Pick one and find out the education, training, and experience required for this profession. Discuss with your counselor and explain why the profession might interest you. Being in the welding industry for a number of years, I can tell you that there are a wide variety of very interesting jobs in this particular field, and they're always looking for skilled labor. You may find yourself welding things like a nuclear reactor or a nuclear submarine, a cruise ship to an aircraft carrier. And don't let me even start on the aerospace industry. There are hundreds of job opportunities. Everything from TIG welding all the way to laser welding. It's just one of the things that this merit badge can put our scouts on the road to. Last but not least, Requirement 7B. Discuss the role of the American Welding Society in the welding profession. Now, according to the book, the American Welding Society is a nonprofit organization dedicated to the advancement of welding and allied processes. Truly, what the American Welding Society is, is a wealth of information. Uh, you can go onto their websites, you can find out where different certification courses are being held. Um, some people who are AWS members also have different forums. You can go in, ask questions, watch video demonstrations. Um, a lot of the membership of this organization is out there to spread this knowledge and really cultivate the interest um, in this industry. They want to see this around for a long time and welding is an essential process to a lot of the different things that we do in our society today. Um, it has a lot to do with our infrastructure, with transportation and uh, things of that nature. Uh, when I was a member of uh, the American Welding Society at Lincoln Tech. I was a student member and the wealth of information that I was able to get off of their websites and from their material um, really, really gave me an advantage uh, when I was pursuing that education. And the American Welding Society is also working hand in hand with the Scouts uh, and produced this Merit Badge book. And like I said in the beginning of this video, welding has been one of my passions for a long time 
and I am truly grateful for the people who took the initiative to bring this into the scouting community. Before I end the video, I want to take this opportunity to thank you all for watching. I'd also like to thank the course director and staff of Wood Badge Course Number N27213. You guys were amazing. I'd also like to take this opportunity to extend the invitation to any adult scout leader out there who has not yet taken a Wood Badge course. Trust me when I say it'll definitely change your perspective on scouting. For now, I'm going to end the video and wish you all well to wherever the scouting road may lead you.